This screencast is to help you with Module 2, Mid-Module Review. It's based on the practice set I created to help prepare students for their Module 2, Mid-Module assessment. There's a number of problems that relate to words and expressions, and we'll get started with that right now. We'll also discuss some of the pitfalls that students may encounter. So check your work carefully if you're using this to correct your homework or your practice set. All right, let's start with the first one. We have 30 times the sum of 35 and 65. We should know that sum means adding. Okay, we're finding the sum of these two numbers. And we say 30 times that, we should know, of course, by now, that that generally means multiplication. I can do this a couple of ways. I can uh, start with the 30 times the sum of 35 and 65. However, if I do that without adding parentheses, I'll get the wrong answer because we would be multiplying 30 times 35 plus 65, and that's not what it says. It says 30 times the sum of these two numbers. So we're going to have to add some parentheses in order to get the correct answer. We can also change the order because of the commutative property. I could also write this 35 plus 65 times 30 and I still need to put those parentheses around because order of operations tells me that I must multiply before I add. Then it says to find the value or evaluate. Now a lot of uh, kids might just uh, look at the 35 and 65 and some of us can get that right and do the regrouping in our head but I've also seen a number of students uh, not able to do that, so I would recommend, especially on a test, to actually write those numbers vertically to do the adding. And we get 100. So to find the value of that, we have 30 times 35 plus 65 equals 30 times 100 equals 3,000. So we can write the expression either way in the blanks. I'm not going to bother to write them uh, now, but uh, I'll leave them there and we'll use another color for the second problem. <clears throat> we have a divide the difference between 120 and 50 by 5. We should know by now that the word difference means subtraction. So divide the difference between. Okay, we're going to have to find the difference between 120 and 50. So we'll do that. We can't change the order of these uh, because we don't have the commutative property for subtraction, nor do we have it for division, as you'll see in a moment. So now that I have the difference of 120 and 50, I have to divide that by 5. Now some students might write it this way. That's a much different problem. Again, we don't have the commutative property in uh, division. 5 divided by what would be 70 is di very different from 70 divided by 5, so we're not going to do it that way. So there's our expression. Now we need to evaluate it. 120 minus 50 divided by 5 equals 70 divided by 5, and that equals 70 divided by 5 would be 14. So in the value a column of our uh, chart here, we'd put in 14. Let's do some more examples. The sum of 23 12s and 17 12s. Well, when we look at these, we know that 23 12s would be the same as multiplying, and 17 12s would be the same as multiplying. We see the word sum, that means we need to do some adding. So, I'll go and do this part first. 23 12s is the same as 23 
times 12. And we need to add, because we're finding the sum of that, and 17 12s would be 17 times 12. Now in this case, I actually don't need parentheses. The order of operations would tell me to multiply before I ever add. So in this case, I would multiply and find the product of this, and then I would find the product of the second pair of factors. So that's the expression. If you put parentheses around both of those pairs of factors, it won't be wrong, but it's not necessary. Now how do we evaluate this? Well, we could go and multiply 23 times 12 and 17 times 12. But there's an easier way to do that. Because if we know that 23 times 12 plus 17 times 12, we can simply do this. I could have 23 plus 17 times 12 using the distributive property. And the sum of 23 and 17 is 40. I can easily multiply 4 times 12 and get 48. But since I'm multiplying 4 tens by 12, I have 48 tens. So the answer is 480. Let's work on the next one. I have 16 times the sum of 24 and 6. No big deal. That's uh, very similar to the one that we had done on the previous slide. 16 times the sum. Again, the sum means adding. 24 and 6. Again, we could reverse the order. because of the commutative property. And again, we have to have parentheses around the uh, two add ends because this tells us to add before we multiply. And if we don't have the parentheses, the correct way to solve it would be to multiply first and then add. So let's go on and uh, evaluate this. And we'll simply find the sum of 24 and 6. I'm just going to go underneath here. That is 30 times 16. You might want to do this out, but uh, some of you may know that 3 times 16 is, once again, 48. And since it's not 3 16s, it's, or it's not 3 16s, or it's 30 16s, which is 3 10s. So instead of having 48 1s, we have 48 10s. We'll simply put in that 0. Let's do a few more examples. In this case, we're missing the expression, the words, okay? So we need to convert this to words. And this is not that difficult. We can actually, in this case, go from left to right. So I could go 100 times. I'm adding here, so what word do I use? The word I use is sum. One hundred twenty-five and we use the word and thirty. Let's evaluate that. We can go back to the original expression. I'll write that down. We'll evaluate the add ends within the parentheses because of the order of operations. One hundred twenty five plus thirty is one hundred fifty five. I can use some basic facts here. I know that one times one hundred fifty five is one hundred fifty five. But what do I have? I have 100 okay, times 55, so I have, or 155, so I have 155 hundreds. The resulting number, the solution, is 15,500. Let's do the next one.
I have to change this into words too. <clears throat> I could uh, do this, uh, and again I could change the order, but I'm, I'm going to go left to right. So the, I have subtraction. I'm going to try a different stylus here. The, well, what do we have here? We have subtracting the difference. between two hundred forty five and forty five multiplied by eleven. I could do this another way. I'm going to try yet another stylus. I could also say, could change the order, I could say 11 times the difference between 245 and 45. I need to evaluate that. I'm actually going to move it right up here. 245 minus 45 is 200 times 11. I know that 2 times 11 is 22, but that's not two ones, that's 200, so I have 22 hundreds. So the correct solution to that is 2,200. Now we're going to compare two expressions using the less than, greater than, or equal to symbols. Explain how you know in the space below each without calculating. Well, I'm not going to accept just the correct answer here. I, I need an explanation. And you can use words or you can use uh, mathematical expressions. Uh, so let's take a look at the first one. I have 100 times 8 equals 25 times uh, the product of 4 and 7. Now, this is kind of difficult, right? I mean, this one's easy. 8 times 100 is 800. This one, 25, and then we evaluate that, times 28. And that's not so easy. But we, let's, we can do something pretty clever here by applying uh, the associative property. So I'm going to use the associative property to regroup these. Because whenever I see a 25 and a 4, you got my attention. Because that very special combination of factors means you got a hundred. So let's rewrite this as 25 times 4 times 7. And now I have 100 times 7. Well, clearly, 100 times 8 is greater than 100 times 7. So without calculating the whole thing and using our knowledge of properties, we can easily solve that without making the actual calculation. Let's look at the next one see what we can do with that. 39 times 11. All right, and we have 25 11s plus 15 11s. Well, okay, let's look at this one here and see if we can find a relationship to the other uh, part of this inequality to the left. So I have 25 11s is the same as 25 times 11 plus 15 times 11. Now I can use my distributive property. I can take my two uh, factors, 25 and 15, and combine them. I can add them. So I have 25 plus 15 times 11. And I'm just going to move over and use the equal sign there. That is 40 times 11. So without going through the pain of multiplying 39 times 11, I know that 40 times 11 is greater than that. So we can say 39 times 11 is less than 25 11s and 15 11s. The last one here, 
25 times 18. We're comparing that with 925s doubled. Well, I see the 25s there, and I see the 25 there. Let's see what we can do with that. 9 times 25 is the same as 925s, and we take that and we double it. Well, I can now use this, my associative and the commutative properties to figure this out. So I'm going to rearrange these guys. I'm going to have 25 times 9 times 2. I'm going to use the associative to group those two. And I now have 25 times 18. And without solving the actual problem, we know that these two parts of the inequality are equal. Solve. Use words, numbers, or pictures to explain your answers to parts A and B, the, the, how your answers to parts A and B are related. Well, this is pretty simple. It's kind of laid out for you here. We know that 15 times 20, and I'm just going to make the calculation here. And that's 2 times 15, which is 30, but it's 2 tens. So we have 30 tens. And the answer is 300. In the next one, I change my expression, changing it from standard form to unit form. So 1 and 5 tenths becomes 15 tenths. And I know that 15 times 2 is 30. And so 15 tenths times uh, 20 is 300. But it's 300 what? It's 300 tenths. So my actual answer, 300 tenths, I convert it to standard form equals 30. Now how are they the same? Well, I, I can easily say that I use the, uh, the first one. I'm not going to write all this out this time, but I'm, I'm just going to jot down a couple things. Um, when, when we convert this one to unit form, we have the same fact, don't we? Except we're using tenths. So uh, when we convert one and five tenths times twenty to unit form, we have have the same factors. 15 times 20. We can get the product. Then convert to standard form. Alright, gave you a little more explanation than I promised there. We have some problems where they tell us to multiply using the standard algorithm and show your work below each problem. Write the product in the blank. Frankly, I don't care whether you use the standard algorithm or the area model. I, both are legitimate, and I don't think one's better than the other. There's other algorithms, too, and I've showed a few of those to you, and I'm fine with that. The main thing is to have a process that I can follow and that you can follow that makes sense and gives us the correct product. I will use the standard algorithm for this one. So we have 415. I'd like to put that larger factor than one with more digits on the top because I only have two partial products as opposed to three. This is kind of easy because we have a four in the ones place and the four in the tens so we can piggyback our second partial product upon the first partial product so let's begin. Four times five is twenty, regroup the two. Four times one is four plus two is six and 4 times 4 is 16. Now all I have to do is insert the 0. I'm going to have the same digits, but they're going to be in different places. I'm multiplying from 
4 from the tens place this time, so that 0 needs to go in. I just will copy that down, making sure I have them reasonably aligned. I take my two partial products, group, and that's 8, and that's 18,260. Again, you don't have to use that. You can use the area model or any other algorithm that is understandable by the grader. Do that on a state test, they, they're not going to mark it wrong. Okay, especially in book three. As long as you have a process that the grader can follow, they're good. Let's do the next one. And again, I, I will use the standard algorithm. By the way, if you're using the, uh, the area model, you should have uh, numbers that match these partial products if you, as long as you put your 415 uh, factor on the top. All right, 464, 465 rather, times 307. Now, how many partial products are we going to have this time? The answer is two because we have zero in the tens place. Some people like to write zero 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 for their uh, second partial product, but that's not necessary. So let's begin multiplying from the ones place. Seven times five is thirty-five. Regroup that three. Six seven times six is forty-two. Plus three is forty-five. Regroup the four. Seven times four is twenty-eight. Plus four is thirty-two. I'm going to skip multiplying from the tens place, and I'm going to go straight to multiplying in the hundreds place. I need to remember to put down two zeros because I'm not going to have any digits in the ones or the tens place because I'm multiplying from the hundreds place. So let's begin. I have 3 times 5 is 15. Regroup my 1. 3 times 6 is 18 plus 1 is 19. Regroup the 1. And 3 times 4 is 12, plus 1 is 13. Again, you can see we have two partial products. Let's find the sum, giving us the product. And I end up with 142,755. Okay, we have a word problem here. For a school field trip, the school bought 37 sandwiches at $4.75 each and 29 bags of chips for $1.45 each. How much did the school spend in all? I'm going to start with a tape diagram. You know how much I love those. and uh, They're great to help you solve problems that are complicated. Not that this one is real complicated, but I'm going to represent it. I'm going to start with my sandwiches. We'll just put an S for sandwiches. And I'm going to put a large tape diagram here. And we're going to represent the sandwiches. We're not going to write 37 boxes here. We know a shorthand for that. And I can uh, do a couple things here. I put my ellipsis in here. And I can just write 1 and 2 and 37. There's other ways to do this. The next thing we're going to do is represent the chips. I'll put a C for chips. Well, you know it's going to be a little bit shorter. I have no idea and it's not important, but we do know that 29 bags of chips for $1.45 is going to be less than 37 sandwiches for $4.75. So we're going to represent each bag here. $1.45. $1.45. On our ellipsis and one dollar forty five cents and we're going to do one two and twenty nine so we realize that we're multiplying the sandwiches what well we could repeatedly add 475 37 times we have a better algorithm for that in fifth grade it's called multiplication and the same with the chips and we know that they spent money on both so we need to know what they spent in all so we're going to combine these two and there's our question mark. Another, another way to do that would be to make another 
uh, tape diagram for step two. I'll do that when we get to step two. So now I'm going to write $4.75 and I could go and write that as 475 hundredths. I think most of us know what's going on now without doing the uniform. No problem using the uniform. I'm going to multiply that times 37. 7 times 5 is 35. Regroup the 3. 7 times 7 is 49. Plus 3 is 52. Regroup the 5. 7 times 4 is 28. Plus 5 is 33. Let's cross those out. Uh, next uh, partial product, when we multiply 3 from the tens place, putting our 0 in the ones place, and we have 3 tens times 5 is 15 ten, tens. Regroup that one. And 3 tens times 7 tens is 21 hundreds, plus 1 is 22 hundreds. Regroup the 2. Notice that that 2 is in the hundreds place. And 3 times 4, that's 3 tens times 4 hundreds, it would be in the thousands place. So we have 3 times 4 is 12, plus 2 is 14. Find the sum of our partial products. Five, 2 plus 5 is 7, and 3 plus 2 is 5, and 7 plus 4, or 3 plus 4 is 7. Alright, and we know that since we're multiplying by hundredths, we need to make that hundredths, because we know that that answer in our final product is 100 times greater than this, because we, in essence we're working as if the decimal weren't there make that decimal look a little bit more like a decimal. So our sandwiches are $175.75. Now we need to find the chips. I have $1.45, which we're going to treat as 145, and then insert our decimal again. It would be 145 hundredths times 29. Hmm. Um, there's another interesting thing we could do there. We could use the distributive property, multiplying 145 times 30, then subtracting uh, 145. I'm going to just do it this way, though. So, 9 times 5 is 45. Regroup the 4. 9 times 4 is 36, plus 4 is 40. Regroup the 4. 9 times 1 is 9, plus 4 is 13. Finding the second partial product, inserting our zero because we're multiplying from the tens place. 2 times 5 is 10, regroup by 1. 2 times 4 is 8, plus 1 is 9. 2 times 1 is 2. We're going to find the sum of our partial products. And I get $42.05. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take my product representing my sandwiches. I'm going to combine it with my product or my chips. I'm going to combine them. I'm going to put them together. I'm going to add them. So I'll find the sum of $175.75. and forty two dollars and five cents. Notice in here I am lining up my decimals. Notice that when I multiply I don't, all of a sudden some I've been seeing some examples of kids putting decimals in when they're multiplying and lining up decimals and, and that's not what we do. That'll lead to problems especially when we have two factors each with a decimal. We haven't gotten there yet but it's coming your way. I like to put my decimal in ahead of time in the sum because it should line up with the decimals in the add-ins. We're finding the sum. The answer is $217.80 and of course we're supposed to write a statement. The 
school spent two hundred seventeen dollars and eighty cents. Let's continue. Jean makes hair bows to sell at the craft fair. Each bow requires one and six tenths yards of ribbon. At a fabric store, ribbon is sold by the foot. If Jean wants to make 45 bows, how many feet of ribbon must she buy? Show all your work. All right. The first thing I note is that they give us yards and they want the answer in feet. So we're going to have to consider that before we submit our final answer. Let's work with the yards from now because we'll be working with smaller numbers that way. And it's not easy to convert one and six tenths yards to feet, so hopefully we'll end up with something more manageable after we uh, take care of the other part of this problem. So we'll represent in a tape diagram. And each one of these is one and six tenths. I'm not going to draw that 45 times. I'll number 1, 2, and 45. That tells us we need to multiply 1 and 6 tenths times 45. I am going to use this one. 1 and 6 tenths times 45 is the same as 16 tenths. Just to model this one more time, times 45. Finding the product. 5 times 6 is 30, regroup the 3. 5 times 1 is 5, plus 3 is 8. Finding our second partial product, multiplying from the tens place. Insert our 0 in the ones place. 4 times 6 is 24. No, oh, little mistake there. Take care of that. 24, regroup the 2. And 4 times 1 is 4, plus 2 is 6. Find the sum. I have 720 tenths, which is the same as 72 ones. So she's going to need 72 yards. But now we need to convert yards to feet, because they want the final answer in feet. So let's do that. And we'll uh, use our standard format here. 72 yards equals blank feet 72 yards equals 72 times 1 yard put that in parentheses equals 72 times well how many feet in the yard well 3 feet are the same as the yard so I'll write 3 feet because that's the same as one yard. Now I need to multiply 72 times 3. And I get 216 feet. Please don't try to do that in your head. Please multiply it out. So, how much ribbon? She must buy 216 feet of ribbon. We're going to have to take note of that for our next problem. So keep that in mind, 216 feet. And we want to keep in mind 45 bows for the next uh, couple parts of this one problem. Let's go to the next. If the ribbon costs one cent per foot, what is the total cost of ribbons and dollars? Explain your reasoning, including how you decided where to place the decimal. There's a few ways we could do that. We uh, notice that the answer or the uh, problem expresses the amount of money in cents. We could multiply this out, figure out how many cents this costs and then convert cents to dollars, and every cent is one hundredth of a dollar. 
Uh, we could also change 10 cents to a decimal or change it to dollars right off the bat. I'll um, do it a, I'll do it both ways. So if I have that, I have 216 feet. Remember, we had that from the previous problem. Times 10 cents. Okay, we know that 10 times 216, you know, we move each digit over to the next place to the left. So two hundredths becomes two thousands. Two, one ten becomes one hundred. And six ones becomes a ten. And we tack on our zero. We know how to do this. There's a number of ways to explain it. So I have 2,160 2, cents. So we'll say 2,160 cents equals how many dollars? 2,160 2, cents equals 2,160 times 1 cent equals 2,160 times, well, what's a cent? It's a hundredth of a dollar, and I'm going to use my decimal form, and that equals 2,160 hundredths equals $21.60. I could also initially convert this right over to uh, dollars right off the bat, and I know that ten cents is one tenth of a dollar. And that would be one tenth times two hundred sixteen equals. 216 tenths equals 21 and 6 tenths. Now since we're talking about money, we're going to have two decimal places. That's just a convention in our country, so we've got that there. Now how did I decide what, uh, where to place the decimal? Well, it depends on what, the explanation depends on which approach you took. If you took the first approach, you would say that 10 cents Okay, cents are hundredths, and we needed to uh, change it from the unit form to the standard form. So we basically had to take that number and divide it by a hundred because we're converting dollars to cents. Or in the case of the bread, we can say that we calculated that as tenths, and we got 216 tenths. So to move it to standard form, we had to divide 216 tenths by 10. That gave us 21 and 6 tenths, and we converted that because it's the same as 21 and 60 hundredths. All right, last one after this long, long screencast. The manufacturer is making 100 times as many bows as gene cells in stores nationwide. Write an exp expression using exponents to show how many yards of ribbon the manufacturer will need. All right, well, let's go back to uh, Jean here. She made 45 ribbons, and she used 1 and 6 tenths yards for each ri ribbon. So that's what Jean used, 40 time times 1 and 6 tenths yards. And again, look, they want the answer in yards, that's handy. We want as 100 times as many, so what are we going to do? Well, this is really simple. We're going to have to just write times 100. And there's our expression. They tell that they really make it easy because they tell us, do not calculate the total. Don't bother. <laughs> 